The next principle of animation is that of squash and stretch. Squashing and stretching is a way of distorting the objects so that they become either longer or flatter in order to emphasize that object's speed, their momentum, or even the qualities of the object, like its mass or how rigid it is. Have a look at our bouncing ball. Now, this bouncing ball has good timing and it also has easing in and easing out. But it doesn't tell us much about the quality of the ball itself, especially as it strikes the surface. Adding squash and stretch, however, adds a little bit more lifelike movement to the rigidity of the ball. In this case, we're emphasizing how squ squishy and squashy it is because when it hits the ground, it'll squash out, and as it falls, it stretches out. Here's the same thing for a traveling ball. Notice now that the ball has a little bit more lifelike movement. Again, we're not necessarily trying to show reality. We're trying to emphasize and sometimes exaggerate reality in the animations that we're creating. This is what squash and stretch does. If you slow it down, here's a look at what squash and stretch is doing to the object. As it's falling and picking up momentum, it's going to be stretched out. As soon as it hits the ground, gravity takes over and it squashes the ball flat. And then as it bounces back up, it picks up momentum, squishing back to a perfect circle. The rule of thumb when you use squash and stretch is to always keep the same volume. It's a very common mistake for beginner animators to simply stretch out the ball in one direction. In this case, if you saw the ball falling, all it's doing is getting taller and taller until it reaches the ground and then it gets shorter and shorter. But you want to think of your ball as being filled with water. If you only stretch it out, you can see how a cavity starts to form at the top of it. This means if you want to keep the same volume, have the same amount of mass, not only do you need to stretch it in one direction, you need to squash it in on the other. Here's what the principle would look like. As you pull up, push in on the sides. Or conversely, if you stretch the width of it, you need to squash the height of it. Both of these work in conjunction with one another. As you squash, you also need to stretch in order to keep that believability. Now you can use squash and stretch to add a lot of exaggeration to the movement and the quality of your characters. For instance, in this case, you can have a simple reaction of a person. So he's saying, wow, wow. But watch how much more exaggerated it is when you add squash and stretch to his reaction. It's much, much more profound. Here they are side by side. Look for squash and stretch in a figure's movement as well. Now, naturally, you've got your body's muscles. As they tend to contract and expand, they'll squash and stretch as they move as well. You can overemphasize this in cartoon characters by what they're doing. In this case, the mouse is chewing, and so they're overemphasizing the chewing motion, the squashing and stretching of his head as he performs that action. The same is true for a realistic dog running. Notice that as he, his paws go out, he's stretching and he's squashing back in. If you want to exaggerate that for a cartoon dog, you would exaggerate the amount that he's stretching out. In this case, Pluto is really reaching, and then he's squashing in. His legs are really folding under him to emphasize the speed at which he's running. Even a person jumping can imitate squash and stretch. In this case, we're not exactly exaggerating it, but we're looking for those qualities that we could exaggerate if we wanted to add emphasis to the cartoon character and make it a little bit more lifelike and believable. So look for squash and stretch all around you, and especially in your figures movements and how you can emphasize that quality in your cartoons. Now some additional notes for this. Cartoon gags will often exaggerate that amount of squash and stretch for comedic effect. So use this especially if you want to add uh, emphasis for a gag or if you really want to drive home a punchline for what the cartoon is going to be doing. Squash and stretch is also used for quick movements. When watching cartoons, try to pause the, mo the movement of a cartoon. See if you can slow it down 
and see this squashing and stretching action happen within those frames. I guarantee it's very, very quick, but it's the kind of thing that your eye will catch up on, especially if now you know to look for it the next time you watch an animation. All right, let's do a quick demo to show you how to add squash and stretch to your figures.